This tutorial is about reflection and refraction through mirrors and through lenses. If we start with a plane mirror, plane spelled P-L-A-N-E, means flat mirror, you always start by drawing a normal line, and a normal line is 90 degrees to any surface. The ray of light coming in is called the incident ray, and the law of reflection says that the incident ray and the reflected ray always bounces off at the same angle. So the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. For curved mirrors, we have either concave or convex mirrors. The concave, the way to remember is concave, cave go inwards, so it goes inwards as you look at it, and a convex mirror. A concave mirror, if you shine four parallel rays of light on, they will all be reflected such that their angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, and you'll find that they'll all meet at a point, and this point is called the focus or the focal point. For convex mirror, the rays will diverge, they'll move apart, and therefore they won't meet at a point, so you have to draw an imaginary ray lines backwards to find a virtual focal point behind the mirror, virtual because they're not really focused there. So a concave mirror is called a converging mirror and a convex is called a diverging mirror because that's what they do to light. Um, to form an image, there are three basic rules. So if we look at a concave, the three basic rules are that you draw a ray from the top of the object parallel to the mirror and you know that that will be reflected and go through the focal point. The second ray is from the top down to the middle of the mirror and that will be reflected and joined there. And the third line goes through the focus, and because it goes through the focus, it will then be reflected and come back parallel to the original ray. And this is where the image is formed. To describe the image, you do three things. You look to see if it's real or virtual. In this case, it's real. It can be projected on a screen. Is it upside down or upright? In this case, it's an upside down image. And as you can see from the diagram, it's a smaller than the object, so it's diminished. The magnification is how much times bigger the image is compared to the object. Or if it's less than one, it means the image is actually smaller than the object. And it can be worked out by this equation. So you simply measure the image height divided by the object height. So if the image was twice as big as the object, then the magnification would be two, meaning two times bigger. Refraction is where light changes direction. And the reason it changes direction is it will slow down or speed up. So in the case of a glass block, if light goes through air into glass, it will actually slow down. And this slowing down makes the light bend towards the normal. As it emerges from the glass into the air, it will bend away from the normal. And this is called refraction. Um, a prism, which is a triangle piece of glass, bends it quite different, slightly differently. When it emerges, it bends further away from the normal, and therefore, what happens is that the light is split, the light is dispersed, and the white light splits into the seven different colours. And this is because violet light is refracted more than red light. Okay, let's look at how refraction is used by humans in our eye. Our eye has a lens, and refraction happens in the lens. So here's a diagram of the eye. You can see that rays of light that come in are refracted by the, the front of the eye, by the actual cornea and the lens itself, and focused on the back of the eye, and the back of the eye here is the retina, and it forms a real image on the back of the retina, which then sends a signal to the brain. Two different types of lenses, there are converging and diverging lenses. Converging lens is also known as a convex lens, and it's thickest at the centre. As a diverging lens, is also known as a concave, and it's thinnest. Let's have a look at ray diagrams for these two lenses. First of all, the convex lens, shining parallel rays of light, just like we have in our eye, will focus the rays at a point, at a focal point called a focus, and this is a real focus. For a concave lens, it acts very much like a convex mirror, where the rays of light are diverging, they're spread apart and therefore they won't meet at a point. So you've got to come backwards and find the focal point behind, which means it's a virtual image is formed. So a convex lens is often called a converging lens, and a concave lens is often called a diverging lens, because that's what they do to the light rays. 
Okay, how can we use these lenses? Well, people with short sight, what happens with people with short sight, it means the lens is actually focusing too early. It's not focusing on the retina. So we need to make the rays of light spread apart a little more. So by adding a concave lens, this will correct short sight and therefore the image will form correctly on the retina. For long-sighted people, you'll see that the rays actually meet behind or would meet behind the retina and to put this right we use a convex lens. And the convex lens will bring them to a focus earlier or uh, less distance and therefore they'll focus on the retina and that will correct long-sighted people. This slide is going to show you how you can form an image with a convex lens although there is a further video showing it quite complex how the different images are formed the next video in this series. So quite simply, if you apply the rules as before, draw a ray of light parallel from the top of the object, it will go through the focal point. The second ray to draw is one which goes straight through the middle of the lens, which is undeviated. And if you wish, you can draw a third one through the focal point on the same side as the object, and that will go parallel and all three rays will meet. So this image will be formed where the rays meet. And again, you describe the image in three ways. For this one, it's real. Again, it can be projected on a screen. The, the light rays actually do meet there, so it's real. It is upside down, and as you can see, it's smaller. There are lots of different images, so you need to watch the next video to see how different images are formed. And finally, a couple of applications. Cameras use convex lenses, and as you pr can probably imagine, the image has to be much smaller than the object, and therefore, the lens arrangement is such that the object must always be beyond 2f and therefore you can't focus in on very very close objects. For a magnifying glass the arrangement is shown in the diagram. A magnifying glass uses a convex lens to get a virtual image. Again watch the next presentation for that.